Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and while you're at it, click the bell to be notified of future videos. Here we are the last day of October and today's block is called Diamond, finishes at 12 inches. Here's the diagram. We have two sets of four flying geese and half square triangles and then a square on point in the center. Here are four blocks set block to block. Get a nice secondary design here. This is a three by three grid. So each grid unit finishes at four inches. Here are the patches. We have four different patches along with the AccuQuilt eyes that will cut these shapes. And here are the cutting instructions for each of the different fabrics. On some of these you have choices, especially with half square triangles, to cut squares and piece your half square triangles from squares to cut patches or to cut them eight at a time. And then I have separated out the different A patches that have to do with half square triangles and flying geese and you'll see that. Here are the fabrics I've chosen. We're going to start off by doing the square on point. So this is the square that we're cutting slightly smaller and then we'll piece these triangles around the edges. This is for the half square triangles eight at a time and I'll show you how to do those. Then after we have our half square triangles we'll put them together with the squares, the plain squares and these will be the corner units. And these are the two sets of flying geese we'll make, four at a time flying geese. For the square on point, we'll start with our square and we'll piece the opposite sides first, like this. Then we'll press and then piece the remaining sides. To do this, I turn the triangle with right sides up and then match the right sides of the square. And we're just going to center it on this triangle stitch a quarter inch and do the same thing down here. Now you cut these nubs off and sew these remaining triangles the same way. Put the right side up, match right sides and center, then stitch a quarter inch. Since we cut the square a little bit smaller and we cut the triangles larger, our points will float a little bit but that's okay for me because then I'll have a nice square when I'm finished and I won't cut off any of the points. So we'll just take and center your ruler. We're going to trim this down to four and a half inches. And I just look at the points and try to match those. So here's the quarter inch and it's just above the point. Here's the quarter inch over here and it's just above the, the point. And over here you look for your quarter inch and it's a little bit more over here. So I'm going to move this over and I see my point is just a little bit more now. And the same thing down here, another quarter of an inch. So you just eyeball it and see if it's centered on there and then make sure you have enough to trim off your four and a half inches on both sides here. Sometimes you just need to angle it different like this and it comes out all right. Now trim these two sides and then flip this over. Now you can match your four and a half here and here and trim the two sides. And there's our square on point with the floating points. Next we'll take our patches to do half square triangles eight at a time and we've cut these larger so we can trim them down later. You take the light fabric and on the back you're going to draw four lines. Two on the diagonal and a horizontal and a vertical to split it in half. To determine where you're going to put this horizontal and vertical we cut a six and a quarter inch square. So half of six and a quarter is three and an eighth. And you just line up your three and an eighth mark here and then draw your line. Then turn your ruler here and line up your three and an eighth mark down here and draw your horizontal line. Now you put these two together with right sides together, the light and the dark fabric. 
and for both of these diagonal lines you're going to stitch a quarter inch on each side. So you'll have two lines of stitching here and two lines of stitching on this other diagonal line. Now we're going to cut these apart on all of the lines we drew. And we have our eight half square triangles. Press these open and then we'll trim, trim down to two and a half inches. I have my six and a half inch square and it has a diagonal line. I match the diagonal line with the seam line and then I check all four sides to see that I have enough to trim. So I have enough here. Here is my two and a half right here and my two and a half there. So I have plenty of room to trim. Trim these sides. Spin it around and trim these two sides. Now you match your two and a half on the side and the bottom and match your seam line here and trim. And do that to all of your half square triangles. Now we're on step three and we're going to take half square triangles and the squares. This is the B patch and we're going to piece our corner units. So we put them like this. And we'll stitch four like this. Stitch these two together and these two. Press the seams, then stitch the rows together. For the side units, we have two sets of flying geese. They're both going to be pieced the same way. So I'm going to demonstrate one. On the back of the small squares, we mark a diagonal line and place them right sides together with the large square. The small squares are the sky part of the flying geese and the large squares are the geese part of the flying geese. So you line these up, you match these, this corner and this corner and then you line up this straight line to make sure it's straight. Now on each side of this diagonal line we're going to stitch a quarter inch. We're going to stitch a true quarter inch for this one on both sides of this diagonal line. Now you're going to cut on the diagonal line and open these up. Press your seams either open or to one side and you'll have two of these. Now for both of these you take the remaining squares, place them on the fabric like this match these two sides and do that for both of these pieces. Now stitch a quarter inch on each side of the diagonal line on both pieces. When you stitch this part, your stitching should begin and or end, whichever way you're going, right here at this angle, this 90 degree angle, and this side and this side. Because what that gives you, once you press it, you have a nice straight line here across the top. Cut these in half on the diagonal line and open them up and press them either open or to one side and then it looks like this. Now we're going to trim this to four and a half inches by two and a half inches. Because we cut the geese part the large square, the exact size we needed, and we cut the small squares, the sky part, a little bit larger. This measurement across the width should be four and a half inches. So let's put our ruler down and it's four and a half inches from here to there. So all we'll need to do is cut off these nubs on this side. Now we need two and a half inches this way. So I'm putting my two and a half inch mark at the bottom and then I check up here my quarter inch to make sure it's clearing the point. I'm going to move it up just slightly. So I'm clear there, so I won't cut off my points when I sew. Now I'll just trim. And we know these sides are correct, so I'll just cut off these nubs. You'll have eight flying geese units. You'll have four like this and four like this. Trim all of them and then we'll sew them together to make the side units. Now in step five, we're going to take our fine geese units 
and piece them together like this. So they make a little chevron shape. Just stitch these together and be careful of your points. You want to put this flying geese on the top. As you stitch a quarter inch, you'll be able to see this point and you stitch just outside that point so you won't cut it off. And then stitch all these together, make four and press the seams open. I found these seams easier to press up towards the, the top of this chevron. It just laid flatter than pressing the seams open. So you might try that if you're having problems pressing your seams open. There's just a lot of bulk here. Now all of our units are done. We'll just put the block together. And there's our block. We stitch these top units together, the middle and the bottom, press the seams, and then stitch the rows together. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and while you're at it, click the bell to be notified of future videos.